connection between female beauty and male infatuation is one of the most regular sequences of cause and effect observable in everyday life. E.H. Carr, What is History? Welcome back. We missed you. As festivities prior to the ceremony begin, Don Quixote overhears praise for Quiteria, the most beautiful woman in the world. He is, of course, offended, but he wisely keeps his objection to himself. He said to himself, it would seem that these people have never seen my Dulcinea of Toboso. What follows is a performance of an allegory that takes place within the larger allegory of Cervantes' description. Like the fencing duel in the previous chapter, violent conflict, or war, is the contextual theme. Among the many dances, the narrator focuses on one that reads like a staged battle, many and diverse dances, among which was one involving swords. A bystander asks if any of the dancers had been injured, and the leader of the dance troupe responds, so far, thanks be to God, no one has been hurt. We're all well. Next comes a more formal allegory. Two sets of dancers oppose each other, one led by interest, money, and the other by love, passion. These clearly represent the struggle between Camacho and Basilio for the affections of Quiteria. Each figure leads its own retinue of symbolic figures. With interest, Camacho, come liberality, gifts, treasure, and peaceful possession. With love, Basilio, come poetry, discretion, good lineage, and valor. If these two could get together, the world would be a better place, no? Did you know? An allegory is a schematic symbolic representation that is meant to be interpreted in order to reveal a hidden meaning, typically moral or political in nature. Next. Four savages appear dragging a wooden castle containing a maiden representing Quiteria. Love and interest then take turns reciting poems that declare their respective powers. Interestingly, Love's poem alludes twice to the cave theme we have seen throughout part two. He says he is a powerful god on land, in the air, and in the sea, but also all that the abyss contains in its horrific chasm, Baratro. Baratro is a deep chasm, Sima, in Attica, into which the Greeks threw people who were condemned to death. Cervantes continues to anticipate the upcoming Cave of Montesinos episode. Interest now responds that he has more power. I am he mightier than love. He also makes a paradoxical reference to commerce, which is morally suspect, but without which normal life is impossible. I'm interest, according to whom few ever labor as they should, though without me, they need miracles. The allegory ends with interest and love battling over the maiden in the castle. Interest pulls out a giant purse made from the skin of a giant tabby cat, which is filled with coins, and hurls it at the castle. His band attempts to drag off the maiden, placing a great chain of gold around her neck but love intercedes. In the end, the savages reestablish peace between interest and love, and the maiden returns to her castle. Don Quixote notes that whoever composed the allegory must be more of a friend to Camacho than to Basilio. And he notes a satire in the performance. What do you think? Which is more important in modern society, love or money? In the theatrical conflict between love and interest over the attentions of the damsel, whom do these allegorical figures represent? A. Don Quixote, Sansón Carrasco, and Dulcinea? B. Tomé Cecial, Sancho Panza, and Teresa? C. Basilio, Camacho, and Quiteria? Correct answer, C. Basilio, Camacho, and Quiteria. The chapter ends with another brief debate between Sancho and Don Quixote. Sancho is now entirely on the side of Camacho. My cock's king, he says, and he twice repeats that I'm with Camacho. Don Quixote observes that Sancho sounds Machiavellian. You're a vile plebeian, like those who shout, long live whoever wins. 
Sancho maintains his defense of wealth. There are only two lineages in the world, as one of my grandmothers used to say, which are the haves and the have-nots. Then he references Apuleius's The Golden Ass, as well as Don Quixote Part 1. An ass covered in gold is still better than a horse with all its trappings. Finally, he recalls the famous idea of death as the great equalizer, a phrase from Horace that Cervantes uses repeatedly. She tramples the high towers of kings, as well as the lowly huts of the poor. There's something political here, and Don Quixote observes that Sancho sounds like a preacher. Sancho makes two final quips about his simple religious nature, in which he echoes the peaceful tolerance of an Erasmian humanist. First, he who lives well preaches well, and I know of no other thologies. And then, I'm as much a God-fearing Gentile as anybody else's son. Don Quixote is impressed, and the narrator leaves us with the ironically violent image of Sancho returning to the feast. And so saying, he once more launched an assault against the nearest pot. That's all for now. Be sure and tune in to watch our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.